sexual self. This is our topic for today. Sex is a part of what makes a person human. Being human, the prime function is procreation. However, sex goes far beyond the instinct to procreate. Sex is likewise about pleasure, enjoyment, excitement, and even ecstasy. Added to this earthly delight of the flesh, this is the thrill of physical touching and being touched by another warm body, surging excitement through sexual release, ultimate coming out during the sexual climax, pulsating, peaceful afterglow, and the relaxing feeling after orgasm. Human sexuality serves both psychologically and spiritually. Sex is one way of lowering one's alienation, isolation, and aloneness by physically linking with penetrating and being penetrated with another person at the most primitive level of existence. Sex gives joy, love, comfort, affection, and at times, ecstasy. Okay? Falling in love, obsession, abandonment, rejection, psychosis, loss of self, fear of annihilation, and the madness, manic madness of ecstasy are psychological side effects of sex. Sexual self forms part of the building of self-concept, attachment, intimacy, and sexual satisfaction played essential roles in the formation of sex. So, okay. Alam natin na pag sinabi nating sex ay male and female. Pero it has another definition. It is what makes a person a human. Kapag sinabi nating sex sa isang human, it means procreation. Alam natin na kapag babae at lalaki, automatic ang mangyayari doon is madagdagan ng lahi. So, if we have positive effects of having sex, like you experience pleasure, enjoyment, excitement, ecstasy. Of course, meron din siyang opposite effect. Ano yung opposite effect? Siyempre, alam naman natin, pag sinabi natin napapasobra, okay? yun yung nakakasama. Kaya nagkakaroon na kapag ka ikaw ay na-obsess, feeling mo ikaw ay na-reject, okay? or halimbawa, um, ikaw ay uh, inabando na, yun yung mga possible psychological effects nitong sex. Okay? So, nawawala din ang um, feeling of alienation, isolation, and aloneness through sex kasi nagkakaroon tayo ng physical contact sa isang tao. Automatic, nagkakaroon ka ng kasama. So, nagkakaroon tayo ng feeling na tayo ay masaya, tayo ay minamahal, tayo ay kinocomfort, at yun, syempre, uh, tayo ay uh, pinagpapakitaan ng affection. Okay, so we will now go to the difference between primary and secondary characteristics. I assume you have um, learnings about the different sexual characteristics because um, we, uh, I think you have discussed this during your high school period. But, uh, dadaan na natin uli siya. So, kapag sinabi natin primary sex characteristics, ito yung mga sex characteristics or sex organs natin mismo. So, uh, yung outer, yung nakikita natin sa labas, okay? At syempre, yung nasa loob din ng ating uh, reproductive system. So, para sa mga lalaki, ang sexual characteristic or somatic sexual characteristic ay yung penis and scrotum, okay? Na nag-aalaw sa mga lalaki na mag-deliver at gumawa ng sperm. Sa female naman, ano naman ang primary sexual characteristics ng mga babae? Of course, the vagina, uterus, the fallopian tube, clitoris, the cervix, and of course, the ability to bear a child. Okay? So, we will now go to the secondary sexual characteristics or secondary sex characteristics. We have um, several stages hanggang stage 5, yung naka sa ad sa ating reference na napagkuhanan. But, Um, to cut it short, itong um, secondary sex characteristics ay lumalabas during puberty stages. Mas nauunang nagmamature ang mga babae kesa sa mga lalaki. So what were the um, experiences na nangyari sa inyo during your puberty stage? Para sa mga babae, lumalaki ang dibdib. Tumatangkad, bumibigat nagkakaroon ng mga buhok-buhok sa ibang parte ng katawan, okay? Buhok sa kilikili, may sa pubic area, okay? Lumalapad ang bew, ang balakang, okay? Ano pa? Ah, uh, nagkakaroon ng menstruation, okay? Yun yung mga kalimitan na nangyayari sa mga babae. Now, we will go sa mga lalaki. Of course, sa mga lalaki, tatangka din kayo, bibigat din kayo. Ang boses niyo mababago lalapad ang inyong mga balikat. Okay? 
at by this time, dito sa inyong puberty stage, magkakaroon na kayo ng sperm production. At kung ang mga babae ay uh, nagkakaroon ng menstrual period every month, kayo naman, by the time you have reached puberty, kayo naman ay isi-circumcise. Okay? At ang difference, of course, ng... Uh, Ang isang difference dun sa secondary sex characteristics kung sa mga babae, ayun nga, um, sila ay nagkakamenstruation, tas lumalapad ang kanilang balakang, lumalakan dibdib. Sa inyo naman, syempre yung mga penis nyo, mga scrotum nyo, testicles nyo, lumalaki yun. Okay? Nagkakaroon kayo ng mga bigote. Okay? Yun yung mga nadadagdag sa inyo. Ngayon, we will now go to the human reproductive system. So ngayon, kapag ka dumating ka na sa point ng in secondary sex characteristics ay nagma, nagmamature na o lumalabas na. Okay, ano ang mga pwedeng mangyari? Um, when the secondary sex characteristics appear, sexual maturation begins. It is the pituitary gland that is a key player involved. Pituitary gland secretes Okay, sorry, it's typographical error. Secretes growth hormones and signal the adrenal gland to release androgens, a male sex hormones to create biochemical changes that produce body hair enlargement of the breast and widening of pelvis for girls. And for the boys, there is the deepening of voice, widening of shoulder appearance, of appearance of body hair and also increased sex drive. So, pituitary gland is the one responsible for our maturity or... Uh, is the one responsible for the sexual maturity sa atin, okay? So, androgens do not just produce secondary sex characteristics, but because it is constant, males are capable of sexual activities with regards to biological cycles. When female reaches puberty, two ovaries start to produce two hormones, estrogen and progesterone, but these two hormones are not produced consistently like the males because they follow cyclical patterns. The most output during um, occurs during ovulation when a ripe ovum is released from the ovary to the fallopian tube, which has a chance of fertilization by the sperm. Okay, so... By this time, kung ang mga lalaki automatic, anytime pwede sila maglabas ng sperm cell, makakabunti sila. Ang mga babae, hindi. Kataunan mo pa yan kapag ka sila ay uh, mag-ovulate. Okay? Doon pa lang. Hindi yung laging, uh, ay, ang mga babae naman ay automatic naman, may mga egg cells naman ang mga yan. You have to wait for that to ripen and mag-ovulate. And doon pa lang, mapapasok ang process ng fertilization. Okay? Reproduction. So, the spermatozoa or the sperms and the ova are, uh, contains 23 chromosomes each. Chromosomes are thread-like structure that contains genes. Genes are hereditary materials and each gene consists of a single molecule of DNA which is the biochemical basis of heredity or code of heredity. So, um, I think nadaanan nyo na rin to sa biology. Female has 23 pairs of X chromosomes and the male has 23 Chromosomes, But the first 22 pairs of X chromosomes are called antosomes and the unpaired is called sex or Y chromosomes. Ngayon, meron dyang uh, sinasabing combination eh. Kapag daw ang Y uh, chromosome ng lalaki ang nag-penetrate sa X chromosome ng female, dun sa yung Y chromosome ng sperm cell ng lalaki ang napapunta or nag-penetrate sa X chromosome ng female, ang combination na yon ang lalabas ay boy. Kaso, kapag yung X chromosome ng lalaki ang nagpenetrate sa X chromosome ng female din, ang magiging combination nun paglabas ay girl. Okay? So, alam nyo na, kung kayo lalaki, lalaki, sa mga lalaki estudyante ko, ibig sabihin yung Y chromosome ng tatay nyo ang nagpenetrate sa, penetrate sa X chromosome ng nanay nyo. Doon man sa mga estudyante kong babae, sa mga estudyante nating babae, yung X chromosome ng tatay nyo ang nagcombine sa X chromosome ng nanay nyo. Okay? So, genes regulate the development of all human characteristics and abilities. The complete set of genes that make up a person's heredity is the person's genotype. Genetic instruction with environmental influences produces a genotype, which is an individual's physical behavior and psychological feature. So, alam nyo naman yung kasabihan, yung sinasabi ng iba na kung ano yung puno, yun daw ang bunga. Kasi, as per a study, ito nakalagay, genetic instruction with environmental influence produces a genotype which is an individual's physical behavior and psychological features. Okay? Kung ano kalimitan yung nakikita na, na mana mo or nakita mo sa environment or naka-influence sa'yo, yun yung magiging behavior mo physically and psychologically. 
pupunta naman tayo sa erogenous zone. So, itong erogenous zone, ito yung mga part na kalimitan pag natatouch sa atin, tayo ay nakakaramdam ng pressure. Okay? Meron tayong tinatawag na primary erogenous zone and secondary erogenous zone. So, ano yung mga primary erogenous zone? Ito yan. Yung ating mga genitals, yung ating mga puwet, okay? yung mga nipples, okay? itong mga gitna ng hita natin, kilikili, pusod, um, leeg, tenga, labi, dila, okay? Yung mga yon ang primary erogenous zone. Ibig sabihin, mahawakan lang yan o malapatan lang yan. Kayo ay nakakaramdam na agad ng pleasure. Ano naman yung secondary erogenous zone? Lahat yan, yung lahat ng hindi nabanggit na part ng katawan mo, yun ang secondary um, erogenous zone. Bakit siya tinawag na secondary lang? Kasi kailangan pang uh, kumbaga, um, may support. For example, um, sa lips, lips ang first, ang primary origin zone mo. Pero pag in-stroke or hinawa ka ng iyong likod, okay, habang kayo ay uh, nagro-romance, ayun, doon papasok na ang iyong likod or yung paghagod uh, sa iyong likod, ikaw ay may kakaibang mararamdaman. Okay? Sunod. We will now go to the human sexual behavior which is etong uh, mga susunod na aking babanggitin. Okay, so ang una, masturbation or solitary sex. Kapag sinabi nating masturbation, it's a self-satisfaction, sexual self-satisfaction. Men and women typically start to masturbate for the first time at different ages ranging from 5 to 21 years with the highest peak at 9 to 13 years for males and 12 to 16 years for females. Okay. Pero mas common kasi ang um, pagmamasturbate ng mga lalaki kapag ka sila ay nagbibinata pa lang tapos bumabagal na siya or nawawala na siya. Tapos sa mga babae naman, they begin to masturbate early with maximum frequency later. Mas um, dumadalas naman daw. Kung, baga, kung sa lalaki, uh, highest peak niya nung bata, tapos habang tumatanda, ay humihina. Sa babae naman daw, um, mas tumataas kapag kayo medyo uh, naedad na sila. Okay? Masturbation or solitary sex is more often engaged in only by those who do not have sexual outlet. An idea that has no relation to reality. It was reported that married men aged 20 to 40 usually masturbated 24 time, times a year, whereas married women of the same age had it 10 times a year. Okay, so sinasabi na, of course, if you do not have a sexual partner, that is just the time that you are going to do solitary sex. So, kaya ang mga gumagawa ng kalimitan daw is mga teenager or usually wala pang sexual partner. Okay, so we will now go to heterosexuality. Sorry again, typographical error. Some people believe that the first time they experience sexual act, they have already reached significance in their lives. Heterosexuality and attraction and behavior toward the other sex is far more than male and female sexual act. Kissing, petting, caressing, necking, and massaging, and other forms of sex play are parts of heterosexual behavior. So, yung heterosexuality... Um, it's an attraction to the opposite sex, okay? So, um, ikaw ay may partner na dito. It's a male and female kind of relationship, okay? Going to premarital sex, okay? So, from the word premarital, it means before marriage, okay? Nung una, etong uh, premarital sex na to, napaka... Uh, it's prohibited. It's very much prohibit, prohibited before. Kasi parang labag siya sa Filipino values. Okay? Um, kung makikita, kung nung unang panahon, automatic kapag ka nakita halimbawa na uh, nabuntis ng walang asawa, parang kasalanan na agad siya. Okay? So, hindi ko sinasabi na ngayon hindi na siya kasalanan. Kaso, medyo natatanggap na kasi siya ng lipunan ngayon. Okay? But, um, it doesn't mean na it's allowed. Kumbaga, hindi na lang ganun katindi or kagrabe ang tingin ng mga tao kapag ka may nabubuntis before pakasalan. Okay? But premarital sex is a sex, sexual act done para doon sa mga bata pa. Actually, bata pa or 
um, hindi pa kasal, like boyfriend, girlfriend, okay? So, my advice, my personal advice, is you have to be sure with your sexual partner, okay? Or, kasi baka mamaya first year college pa lang kayo, every year or every month magpapalit kayo ng kapartner, baka bago kayo makarating ng Uh, magtatrabaho na kayo, nakasampung boyfriend or girlfriend na kayo, okay? So, you have to um, be conscious, be intelligent in choosing your partner. Hindi basta-basta ibinibigay ang sarili kung kani-kanino, okay? So, marital sex. We're now going to marital sex. Sex in marriage is the most standard and acceptable sexual behavior. Okay, walang babawal sa'yo na makipag-sex ka if you're married. Kahit may makakita sa inyo halimbawa na kayo ay sweet-sweetan, although it's bawal kasi it's um, uh, PDA kumbaga. At syempre, may, wala namang merit nga na tao na gumagawa. Kalimitan ng nag-PPDA actually ay yung mga hindi pa nga kasal. Pero ang pinakatanggap ng lipunan is marital sex. Okay? There are those people who do it regularly. Others have a few times a month. Some do it two to three times a week. Okay? Um, however, with increasing age and length of marriage, the frequency of sexual act decreases. Okay, so, kanya-kanyang strategy yan. Merong once a month, reading two to three times a month, okay, two to three times a week. Pero sinasabi na habang tumatanda daw at tumahaba ang length ng marriage, bumabawas na din ang sexual act. Okay, kasi siguro sanay ka na dun sa taong yun, okay, or uh, alam mo na huli nyo na ang kiliti ng isa't isa, okay. So now, extramarital sex. Ito, isa to sa pinagbabawal. Of course, from the word extramarital, meaning kahit kasal ka na, ikaw ay may iba pang kapartner. Okay? So it's definitely bawal. Okay? So now, homosexuality or LGBTQ. Okay, so... Um, dito sa lipunan natin ngayon, it's not just um, male and female. Okay? So, kaya tayo ay uh, may tinatawag ng gender. Diba? Pag sinabi, sex is just male and female. Pero pag tinanong sa'yo, what's your gender? So, dun pa pwede, pwede sasagot na le- uh, gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, queers, and so on and so forth. Okay. So, homosexuals are individuals who are sexually attracted to members of their own sex, whereas bisexuals are those who are sexually attracted to the same and other sex. Same sex and other sex. Generally, male homosexuals are called gays and female homosexuals are called lesbians because this refers to a wider array of attitudes and lifestyles that focus on sexual activities. The determinant of sexual orientation is proven difficult to pinpoint. There are some theories that explain that what makes people homosexual or heterosexual. Homosexuality or heterosexuality is biological in nature. Another is hormone that may show a role in determining sexual orientation. It, has, it is said that a pregnant woman who took a drug uh, death to prevent miscarriage. Okay, so hanggang ngayon, wala pa namang pinakatalagang nakikitang dahilan na makakapagpatunay kung bakit daw nagkakaroon ng ibang sexuality. Okay? Transsexual, so, pero as of now naman, hindi na siya naman nagiging problema kasi tanggap na naman siya ng community. Transsexuals are people who believe that they were born with a body of another gender. In some ways, transsexuals are less of sexual difficulty than a gender issue concerning sexual identity. Transsexual, like one popular international female singer and one handsome matinee idol had undergone sex, undergone sex change. Transsexual sex change operation has to go several steps. So, eto, yung homosexual, alam na natin yan, gays, lesbians. So, sa gay, kita natin na, um, alam natin na uh, kahit bihis lalaki siya, alam natin na siya ay gay. Sa mga babae naman, medyo boyish, kita natin. Or kahit magkikilos, or yun nga, medyo iba din yung type ng padalamit. Pag sinabi naman transsexuals, ito yung mga nagpa-sex change na mismo. Okay? Or um, pwede din natin um, sabihin ng mga cross-dressers. Okay? Kasi, So, yun mismo yung pinaniniwala nila ang kanila, hindi ako dapat babae nung pinanganak ako, dapat lalaki ako, or hindi ako talaga lalaki eh, ako talaga yung babae, puso, isip, um, babae ako, nasa katawan lang ako ng lalaki. Okay? So, transsexualism is a part of a wider category known as transgenderism. This term pertains not only transsexual but also to people who see themselves as the third gender. Transvestite, 
those who wear clothes of the other genders or some of them believe the traditional male-female classification who wrongly characterize themselves. Okay. So yun sinabi ko kanina na cross-dresser. A sexuality is another type of sexual orientation where an asexual lacks attraction to both men and women. Unlike celibate, an asexual has little or no attraction to either men or women but can experience sexual desire. Androgyny, okay. So, yung asexuality, pag celebrate kasi sinabi talaga ng ikaw ay wala kang sexual life, wala kang sexual contact. Pero, pag ikaw naman yung asexuality naman, ikaw ay hindi ka naa-attract sa babae o lalaki. Hindi ka nakakaramdam ng um, pag may nakikita kang babae o lalaki, hindi ka naa-attract. Pero nakakaramdam ka naman ng sexual desire. Okay? Pero wala kang pakialam. Kahit may dumikit sa'yo na babae o lalaki, wala kang pakialam. Pero may nararamdaman ka sa loob sa loob mo. Okay? Androgyny, this literally means a man-woman which refer to having both masculine and feminine traits. So, yun yung kaganda-gandang babae, nakamini skirt, girl na girl, pero may pagka um, masculine, matapang. Okay? Or uh, matika, salimbawa. Extra dyadic sex is having sex with someone other than one's regular relationship partner like spouse or boyfriend and girlfriend. So itong extra dyadic sex ay uh, kagaya ng uh, related to extramarital sex. Okay? So what makes what turns people on? If one wants to argue that the major sex organ is the brain, in a sense, one would be right. Major factor considered sexually arousing in one society has actually nothing to do with the genitals. Instead, sexual arousal is related to external stimuli that the due process of learning it becomes to be labeled as erotic or sexually stimulating. In reality, there are no areas in the body that instantly produce sexual arousal when touched. It is actually the erogenous zone, the areas of the body that are sensitive to sexual touch due to the presence of rich arrays of nerve receptors that are practically sensitive to any kinds of touch. Usually, people learn to respond sexually to any stimulus. There is a common denominator as to with what is an erotic stimulus. Men and women's fantasies differ a little from one another in terms of quantity. Being irresistible sexually is engaging in oral sex which is common to do to both men and women but their fantasies do not include desire for fulfillment. Okay? So, yung katotohanan daw, wala naman daw talaga na kapag ka uh, inawakan mo, ikaw ay uh, maaarouse agad, okay? Yun lang mga nahahawakan na yun, yun yung mga aerogenous zone, okay? Kaya, yun nga, pag hinawakan ng tenga, nakikiliti, okay? Pero pag pansin mo, kung ang unang gagawin mo ay sahagudin mo lang ang likod, wala naman talagang mararamdaman. Pero kapag hinalikan mo muna bago mo hinagod ang likod, dun pa lang may mararamdaman, okay? So, physiology of human sexual response, okay? So, we have different uh, phases. So, apat ang sexual responses. So, una muna, excitement phase. Ito yung pinakauna. Ito yung tumatagal ng oras. Okay? Kasi dito papasok yung uh, mag-e-erect ang penis. Okay? Ang clitoris ng uh, uh, female ay magsiswell. Ito yung pinakaunang part. Okay, kapag kayo ay magkakaroon ng sexual activity. Okay, kung mapapansin ng mga babae, maglulubricate ang kanilang vagina. Okay, at may kakaiba silang mararamdaman. Pag pupunta na tayo sa plateau phase, ito yung preparation na for the orgasm. Okay, ito yung tipong kapag ka walang nang abala sa inyong, sa inyong excitement phase or dun sa inyong mga foreplay na ginagawa, ay uh, tutuloy-tuloy ito, itong plateau phase na ito. Okay? So, kung kanina ay uh, kayo ay uh, bigay na bigay na dito sa plateau phase, ito ay mas todo-do pa. Dere-derecho ito if ito ay uh, you are not disturbed. Okay? Ngayon, kapag nasa peak na kayo ng sexual excitement, yun yung tinatawag na orgasm or kapag may malapit na sa inyong lumabas. Okay? So, ito, um, both male and female, kayo ay nag-iiba na ang inyong um, breathing. Okay? Kasi nga, Malapit na eh, di ba? Lahat naman ng tao, kapag ka, um, um, malapit na, ay uh, nagkakaroon na ng pleasure na pakiramdam. Okay? And then, 
Okay, anong example dito sa orgasm? Halimbawa, kayo ay masakit ang siyan, kayo tinitibay, kayo hirap na hirap na ilabas ang inyong nararamdaman. Di ba pag inyong nailabas, that is a great relief. Okay? And then, ang last is the resolution phase. Siyempre, dito sa resolution phase, kapag nailabas mo na ang gusto mong ilabas through orgasm, or kagaya na example ko kanina, kapag nailabas mo na ang sakit ng siyan na nararamdaman mo dahil ikay tinitibay, babalik ka na uli sa dati mong sistema sa dati mong posisyon. And syempre, kailangan mong magpahinga dahil ikaw ay uh, naglabas uh, ng madaming energy. Okay? Madaling uh, makabalik sa normal state ang babae compared sa lalaki. Okay? Ito nakalagay. During resolution stage, the men and women responses differ considerably. Women are able to cycle back orgasm phase and experience repeated orgasm after it has become it has come to the final resolution stage then returns to the, the to the pre-stimulation state. Mas madali kaming makabalik, okay, sa original state namin kaysa sa mga lalaki. Kaya kung mapapansin niyo kapag ka uh, halimbawa biglang uh, may, uh, sa mga palabas or biroan sa TV, halimbawa ay uh, ang mga lalaki hindi daw agad pwedeng pa, mag uh, mag-round po. Kasi hindi ganun kabilis ibalik ang iyong energy. Okay? Kailangan mo pa uling mag-ipon ng mag-ipon. Okay? Sunod. We will now go to the sexual problems. First is the erectile dysfunction. So from the word itself, ito yung ang inyong penis ay hindi talaga na-erect. Okay? Pero bakit kaya? The common case is a male who had never achieved erection but has uh, experienced previously in the past. This erectile dysfunction is due to alcohol, drugs, fear of sexual performance, anxiety, and other factors. Okay, so possible, kaya hindi nag -e erect yan kasi um, may nangyari sa yung uh, may nangyari sa before. O kaya naman ikaw ilasing na lasing. Okay. Kaya nagkakaroon ka ng mga erectile dysfunction. Actually, in majority, lahat naman halos ng um, sexual problems ay pwedeng nagkaroon ka ng um, previous experience na hindi maganda. Okay? So, sunod naman. Kung erectile dysfunction, ikaw ay hindi makapagpa-erect. Okay? Premature ejaculation naman. Ito naman yung kahit anong gawin mong pagpipigil para lumabas ang iyong orgasm, may lumalabas na. Okay? Sunod, inhibited ejaculation. In this problem, the man, man is not able to ejaculate when he wants to. Kung doon naman sa premature ejaculation, kayo ay uh, may lumalabas agad sa inyo kahit hindi pa. Dito naman sa inhibited ejaculation, kahit gusto mo nang ilabas. Okay? Hindi pa rin nag -e ejaculate Okay? Sunod, uh, so we have two types of inhibited ejaculation. The primary and the secondary um, ejaculation. So, sa primary, women never experience orgasm. Okay? Hindi hindi siya nakaranas. Okay? Kaya inhibited ejaculation, kahit anong gusto mong gawin pag ejaculate, walang lumalabas. Ang primary organismic dysfunction is, wala naman, hindi naman talaga naranasan ng babae ang orgasm. Secondary organismic dysfunction naman, women had experienced orgasm at some instant but no longer does now or orgasm may be possible only at certain situations such as masturbation but not during sexual act. Doon naman sa secondary organismic dysfunction, may oras, halimbawa, naramdaman lang niya yun nung nagmasturbate siya pero right after, nung mawala na yung pagmamasturbate niya, wala na uli. Okay? So, yon Ulitin po, kapag ka-inhibited ejaculation, kahit gusto na niya na may lumabas, wala pa rin lumalabas. And dalawang, dalawang um, klase yon sa babae. Una, primary and padalo, primary organismic and patad, padalawa ay secondary organismic. The first one is woman never experience orgasm at ang padalawa naman, may orgasm naman talaga siya. Kaso, um, nararamdaman niya ngayon during certain situation, like masturbation. Okay, inhibited sexual desire. Ito naman yung tao na kahit, um, kahit may sexual partner, hindi siya motivated. Okay? Wala siyang nararamdaman kahit ano. Okay? Vaginismus, this is a strong spasm of the pelvic musculature constricting the female reproductive organ so that the penetration is painful or impossible. Okay? Pag sinabi natin vaginismus, ito yung 
uh, mahihiratang ilabas. Okay, ang babae. Halimbawa, sa pagka nag, um, may, nag-sexual contact ang babae at lalaki, pagka may vaginismus, ang babae ay uh, hindi hindi agad maiipasok or hindi agad maiilabas ang male reproductive organ from the female reproductive organ. Okay? Pero yun nga, possible, nagkaroon ng psychological trauma before Kaya ang coitus is pinaprevent na. Halimbawa, baka nung una, nasaktan. So, yung vagina ng babae, ayaw na. Nag- ginagamit na niyang defense mechanism na hindi na pwedeng magpenetrate or nasasaktan na siya kapag ka may nagpepenetrate sa loob niya. Okay? Sunod, sexually transmitted diseases. Chlamydia is the most widespread infection that usually women who ha- have this do not show symptoms, but in men, this causes burning sensation and discharge in penis. If not treated in women, this leads to pelvic inflammation, arthritis, damage in the urethra, and may cause sterility. Because women do not show symptoms of chlamydia, sexually active women under 26 years old should be tested for the disease yearly. When diagnosed, this STI can be treated with antibiotics. So, sa atin, sa mga babae, mahirap siyang makitaan ng symptoms. Pero sa lalaki, once na makaramdam kayo ng um, mainit na lumalabas or mainit pag may lumalabas sa inyong penis, possible, that's chlamydia. Okay? Siyempre, kaya ka lang naman magkakaklamydia, alam mo naman kapag ka ikaw ay may ginagawang mali. Bakit ba nagkakaroon ng sexually transmitted disease? Pinakaunang dahilan is when you have multiple partners. So, kung ikaw naman ay... Uh, Walang, uh, hindi multiple partners. O kaya halimbawa, wala ka namang ginagawang kakaiba. So, why would you, uh, uh, why would you think that you would have chlamydia? Okay? Genital herpes, these are small blisters or sores around the genitals that when it breaks open, it causes excoriating pain. Alam niyo ba yung singaw? Naka-experience na ba kayo ng singaw sa bibig? Kung ano yung itsura ng singaw niyo sa bibig, yun ang itsura ng genital herpes. Okay? Yun naman ay makikita sa inyong mga organ. Okay? So not gonorrhea. It is the longest recognized sexually transmitted infection by scientists. This infection has no symptoms but can cause burning sensation when urinating and discharge in the penis or vagina. Gonorrhea may result to infertility in men and pelvic inflammation in women. Okay, antibiotic can cure this infection but not completely. So gonorrhea has the same um effect with chlamydia. Kapag ka iihi kayo, may masakit. Kaso, ang chlamydia is, I think gonorrhea is more, uh, uh, parang mas, uh, pati, yata sa, pati sa babae, ay visible na ikaw ay hirap na hirap umihi. Okay? Syphilis, this first show itself in a small wound at the point of sexual contact. In the second stage, rashes appear. This infectious disease may affect the brain, heart, and even the growing fetus. If syphilis is diagnosed early, it can be cured by antibiotics. So, ang unang pinag-uupisa ng syphilis ay sugat. Okay? Kaya mahirap na kapag ka kayo sa sexual contact, pag kaya na biglang may dugo, baka mamaya may sugat na pala kayo sa loob. So yun, pinag-uumpisahan yun. Okay? Ang sunod, magkakaroon na ng mga rashes. Okay? Sunod, AIDS. Everyone is familiar with AIDS. Kasi um, matagal ng panahon na merong sakit na AIDS. Okay? It's a disease that most this, that has the most severe impact on sexual behavior in the whole society than this. Okay? Ang tawag ay Acquired immune, immune Deficiency Syndrome. Okay? Yun ay acquired by a virus. Okay? So, um, ang sinasabi, ayun nga, pagka ikaw ay maraming sexual partner, okay, or hindi ka sure sa iyong sexual partner, baka nga ikaw ay siya lang ang iyong sexual partner, pero siya, are you sure that ikaw lamang ang sexual partner niya? So, uh, to avoid or reduce contacting AIDS and other sexually transmitted diseases, safer sex should be practiced. Okay? So, ano yung mga safer, uh, method, safe methods? So, we have methods of contraception, the natural and artificial. It cannot be said that the, due to the negative impact of sexually transmitted diseases, sexual behavior or sexual fulfillment and ecstasy can cannot be uh 
uh, use kasi part siya ng human person. Generally, procreation is the basic reason for the sexual act. Hence, couples should have this in mind. Literature, literature and contraceptive gives the flowing. So, itong lahat naman nakalista dito, nagulo na yata yung formation ng sentence ko, lahat ito dapat ay meron tayong mga uh, knowledge about this. So, we have two types of contraception. The natural and the artificial method. Okay? So, ano pag sinabi natin natural? It is termed, um, the natural method term fertility awareness pertains to the method of planning and stopping pregnancy through the observance of the natural signs and symptoms of the fertility and safe periods of the menstrual cycle. Sexual contact should be prevented during the fertile period to avoid pregnancy. So, pag natural method, wala kang iinumin, wala kang ikakabit sa katawan mo. Kundi, may mga i-observe ka lang. So, rhythm or calendar method. This rhythm calendar method is the safest one. It's a fertility tracing method by using a calendar. Women has to note her ovulation period and menstrual cycle. And usually, ovulation occurs more or less than 12, 12 to 16 days prior to menstruation or 14 days to the next menstrual period. This rhythm is possible if the menstrual cycle is regular. So, ayun. Kung kayo ay regular ang menstruation, may i-note nyo. Kasi malalaman nyo kung kailan lang kayo um, mag-ovulate. Kasi tama siya lagi sa calendar. Eh, syempre, kapag irregular menstruation ng mga babae, unpredictable kung kailan yung susunod mong period. Okay? Cervical mucus method. So, bakit ganun yung picture? Kasi kung ano yung discharge sa atin, yun yung i-measure natin. Okay? Ah, uh, after a woman's menstru menstruation, there is a vaginal discharge which indicates woman is fertile. This mucus discharge that comes after a woman's menstruation is cloudy and sticky at first. Okay? Ngayon, kapag ka daw ang uh, discharge ay sticky, okay? Kasi yun yung after yun ay malaki ang possibility na kayo ay magbuntis. Kapag dry, yun yung medyo malaki ang possibility na hindi kayo magbuntis. Okay? That's the cervical mucus method. Basal body temperature, this method became, makes use of a special type of thermometer to record changes of temperature. The woman had to record her temperature daily before getting up or before doing anything in the morning. An increase of body temperature of a half degree Celsius means there is ovulation so the couple should refrain from sexual contact. Alam niyo ba yung biro-biro na pagkahinawakan tapos may ito sabihin, ah, fertile ka. May, uh, hindi, siya, hindi, siya, hindi siya dahil sa basal body temperature ha, pero ikinoconnect lang siya doon. Ang basal body temperature naman, yun yung kapag minessure ka ng thermometer para doon. Pag ikaw daw ay uh, mainit, meaning you should refrain uh, you should refrain from doing sexual contact. Kaya increase of body temperature. Meaning, pag ikaw ay mainit. So now, symptothermal method. It's a combination. So, aside from measuring or pagtitingnan mo yung iyong um, sir, mucus, cervical mucus, titingnan mo rin ang iyong basal body temperature. Okay? So now, abstinence. Abstinence, of course, no sexual contact will happen. That is the pinaka-effective kasi 100% siya na kapag ka hindi kayo nagko-contact ng partner mo, hindi ka magbubuntis or walang magbubuntis. So no, doubt. So doubt is done by washing the sperm and semen deposited in the vagina with medical solution just after the sexual contact. This method cannot be reliable because some sperms have gotten inside the vagina before douching. So ito daw yung after daw ng sexual activity, ipapahid mo lang to. Kaya lang medyo hindi siya reliable kasi di ba survival of the fittest ang mga sperm cell. So, malay mo, nakapasok na sa loob or may nakarating na at mag-ovulate na bago mo pa siya na wash away. Okay. Isa pa, prolonged lactation or lactation amenorrhea. Ito yung pagpapadede ng nanay. So, after six months daw, or hanggang six months, kalimitan, ay um, uh, hindi daw nagbubuntis. Okay? Dahil dito sa um, lactation amenorrhea. Okay? Sunod, withdrawal. Ang withdrawal naman ay um, kapag ka malapit na ang orgasm, the penis will then be removed inside the vagina. Okay? At doon i-release sa labas. Okay? That's withdrawal. Or doon mag-ejaculate sa labas. Okay? 
Kaya lang, yun nga, minsan din na din siya nagiging reliable kasi baka mamaya may premature ejaculation pala yung partner mo bago niya ma-withdraw, may nakalusot na. Okay? So, we are now going to artificial method. So, the first artificial method is the pill. Okay? Alam na naman siguro or yung iba familiar kasi yung iba para daw um, maging okay ang monthly period, ina-advise na rin na mag-drink, uh, mag-drink, mag-take, sorry, mag-take ng pill. Okay? So, yun ay may bilang. Kasi dapat yun ay tatama sa um, iyong um, menstrual cycle. Yun ay 21 days. So, may for day 1, day 2, day 3, dire-diretso siya. Sunod, morning after pill. Ito, emergency birth control. Birth control. So, kung halimbawa ah, uh, ikaw ay nakalimutan mong uminom ng pills, tapos um, ikaw ay nagkaroon ng sexual activity, yon ito yung piniinom. Kaso ito ay pinagbabawal na. Kasi, syempre, kung uh, nag-meet na ang sperm at saka egg cell, tapos na-fertilize na yung egg, yun, chances are, parang in mo na rin ang baby mo. Ang implants naman, kaya nakaganyan yung illustration, kasi may ilalagay dito, may i-implant dito sa iyong... Um, ilalim ng skin dito sa may upper arm, okay? Para ikaw ay mag-stop ng ovulating. Okay? O, mag-stop ang iyong ovulation, okay? This is for the ladies, okay? Surgical method or sterilization, ito ay ang pagpuputol ng inyong, pagpuputol or pagtatali ng inyong fallopian tube, okay? Para hindi na kayo or para wala nang makalabas na egg. And then for the vasectomy, ito naman ay surgery para sa mga lalaki, okay? Sunod, condom. I'm sure familiar ang lahat. Ito ay before kayo, um, during sexual activity, kapag ka ang penis ay erected na, isusuot mo itong condom. Sinasabi kasi na um, dun, ka, uh, dun mo i-withdraw ang iyong mga sperm cell. Kaso yun nga, yung iba, minsan hindi na nagiging effective kasi yung iba daw ay manipis, minsan ay nasisira na. So, um... Ito naman, diaphragm or surgical cap, ito ay para sa mga cervical cap, ay para sa mga babae. Kaya lang, medyo parang delikado kasi ito eh, kasi baka mamaya kayo ay uh, uh, halimbawa ay medyo grabe ang inyong sexual activity, baka ito ay mapasuot naman sa loob, hindi nyo na matanggal. Okay? So, sponge naman is a soft donut-shaped device of spongy materials that has permicide. Before it is inserted prior to sexual act, it should be moistened and let it stay in place for about 6 hours, but it can stay for 24 hours if sexual contact is repeated. This sponge works like the diaphragm which serves blockage for the sperm entering the uterus. So, ito, parang ganun din, isusuot mo rin siya. Kaya lang, ayun na, kung kayo ay medyo grabe ang mga sexual activity, baka ito'y mapasuot, maiwanan. Okay? Pero ito ay hindi itinuro sa inyo para pagbibilhin ninyo at gamitin. Ito ay para lang kayo ay magkaroon ng knowledge kasi um, ito'y karapatan yung malaman. Pero it is not advice or we are not advising everyone to buy this para inyong pagpraktisan. Okay? So we will now go to the last part, understanding the chemistry of lust love and attachment. Love can be distilled into three categories, lust, attraction, and attachment. Though there are overlaps and subtle ties to each, each type is characterized by its own set of hormones. Testosterone and estrogen drive lust, dopamine, norep, norepinephrine, and serotonin create attraction, and oxytocin and vasopressin mediate attachment. Lust is driven by the desire for sexual gratification. The evolutionary basis for this stems from our need to produce, reproduce, and a need, a need shared among all living things. Through reproduction, organisms pass on their genes and thus con contribute to the perpetuation of their species. So, pag sinabi natin lust, yun yung drive for sexual gratification. Kasi talaga namang lahat ng tao pag tayo nagmature, ang gusto syempre natin tayo ay makapag-reproduce. Okay? Sino ba naman ang hindi um, gustong magkaroon ng anak? or magkaroon ng lahi, okay, di ba? Meanwhile, attraction seems to be a distinct, truly closely related phenomenon. While we can certainly lust for someone we are attracted to and vice versa, one can happen without the other. Dopamine produced by the hypothalamus is a particularly well-publicized player in the brain's reward pathway. It's released when we do things that feel good for us. In this case, these things include spending time with loved ones and having sex. High levels of dopamine and the related hormone norep 
tineprene are released during attraction. These chemicals make us giddy, energetic, and euphoric, even leading to decreased appetite and insomnia, which means you actually can be so in love that you can't eat and sleep. Ayun. Pag, syempre, kalimitan naman ikaw yung nakakaramdam ng last kapag ikaw ay attracted. Diba? Kaso yung iba, nakakaramdam na rin ng, ng uh, last sa ibang definition ng attraction. Eh. Kahit halimbawang hindi mo talaga totally ikaw um, in love dun sa tao na yun. Diba? Pag nakaramdam ng last, saka iba na. Okay? Sunod. Finally, attraction seems to lead to a reduction in serotonin, a hormone that's known to be involved in appetite and mood. Inter inter interestingly, people who suffer from obsessive compulsive disorder also have low levels of serotonin, leading scientists to speculate that this is what underlies the overpowering infatuation that characterizes the beginning stages of love. Attachment is the predominant factor in the long-term relationships. While loss and attraction are pretty much exclusive to romantic and Entanglements, attachment mediates friendships, parent-infant bonding, and so on and so forth. So, ayun. Kung ang uh, last yun attraction ay papunta lagi sa romantic relationships, ito namang attachment, kahit naman um, anong kind of relationship pwede dito, pwede attach ka sa iyong friends, pwede attach ka sa iyong family, pwede attach ka sa iyong anak, okay, or sa ibang mga kaibigan. Okay, so yun yung different chemistries ng lust, love, and attachment. Kapag ka-attraction and um, lust, kalimitan yun ay male-female relationship or uh, relationship na kayo ay um, gusto nyo mag-reproduce. Pero pag-attachment naman, kahit ano namang kind of relationship, basta ikaw ay engaged dun sa taong yun or palagi mo siyang kasama, that's attachment. Okay, so definition of love and the other type. What is love? Sinasabi natin, diga, um, love is like a rosary that is full of mystery, okay? Love is patient, love is kind, okay? So, pinakamagandang karakteristik ng isang tao ay ang capacity niya na magmahal, okay? Lahat tayo, kaya natin magmahal, okay? Lahat tayo, marunong magmahal, or lahat tayo, natututong magmahal. So, ano yung mga types ng love na yun? So, we have different kinds of love. We have passionate love. Okay? It is an intense longing for union with one another. Okay? So, ang passionate love, ito yung iyong nararamdaman dun sa taong uh, gusto mo maging kapartner. Okay? That's passionate love. Ngayon, pag sinabi naman natin companionate love, it is characterized by friend affection and a deep caring attachment based on familiarity of the loved one. Okay? Ito naman ay, love mo yung taong yun kasi uh, friend mo siya. Okay? Affected ka sa kanya kasi mahalaga siya sa'yo kasi kaibigan mo siya. Or mahalaga siya sa'yo kasi special siya sa'yo, may special part siya sa puso mo, or uh, malapit siya sa'yo. That's companionate love. Okay? So, uh, to Sternberg, love is illustrated in triarchic dimension, intimacy, passion, and commitment. So, ano yung passion? Passion is motivational component that ignites romantic feelings, physical attraction, and desire for sexual interaction. Passion creates a deeper desire to be together with the loved one. Intimacy naman is the emotional component of love that encompasses the sense of bonding with the person. It involves feeling of warmth, sharing, and emotional closeness. Commitment naman is the cognitive component of love which pertains to the conscious decision to love someone and to remain in a relationship for long in spite of the difficulty it entails. So, para kay Sternberg, ito yung triarchic dimension. Lahat halos daw ng relationship umiikot dito eh. So, ikaw ay nakakaramdam ka ng passion dun sa taong mahal mo. Ikaw ay may nararamdamang intimacy sa kanya. And syempre yung commitment. Kahit anong mangyaring masama sa inyo, kahit gigil na gigil ka na sa kanya, basta nandun pa rin palagi itong passion mo at naaalala mo pa rin na intimate ang pakaramdam mo sa kanya. Okay? Dito palagi iikot ang theory of love. Okay? We will now go to the functions of dating. Bakit daw nagde-date ang mga tao? Okay. It can be a form of recreation, source of status and achievement, part of socialization process, involves learning about intimacy and serves as a chance to establish a unique, meaningful relationship. Okay. Opportunity for sexual experimentation and exploration, provide chance for companionship through interactions, 
uh, contribute to identity formation and selection. Okay? Kaya ka daw nakikipag-date. Kasi ikaw ay siyempre naghahanap ka ng mapipili. At um, kaka-date mo, nakikita mo na nagkakaroon ka ng identity formation na ah, ito parang mga ganito yung hilig ko. Ikaw yung nakakapag-explore. Nadadagdagan ng mga kakilala mo. Nadadagdagan ng mga learnings mo sa buhay. Okay? Yun yung mga iba't ibang functions ng dating. Eh bakit naman nai-inlove ang mga tao? People fail in love to over fall in love to overcome loneliness and separateness para hindi sila laging mag-isa. People desire a form of union in the deepest need of human person. People when they are in their own solitariness long for a refuge in union and in love. Love relationship in an aspect of a person's social network instead of a cure to one's loneliness. People fall in love most often has no clear explanation why he or she fell in love with this particular person and not the other one. Pinakauna, dahil ayaw natin tayo mag-isa. Pero sinasabi nga nila, kapag ka, hindi mo na masagot ang dahilan kung bakit mahal mo yung tao yun, ibig sabihin, mahal mo talaga ang taong yun. Kapag nakakasagot ka pa ng, mahal ko siya kasi maganda siya, kasi mabango siya, kasi magaling siya magluto. Ah, hindi pa yun. Pero pag may nagtanong sa'yo kung, pag, kung bakit mo siya mahal, basta mahal mo lang siya. Yun, that's the definition of true love. Okay. So there are some factors that can shed light uh, on this topic. So proximity. This is a geographical nearness of one person to another, which is the most important variable in interpersonal attraction. This is a potent factor in the start of interaction due to the repeated exposure to a new stimuli. For instance, when a person hears unfamiliar music or new work of art at the, for the first time, he becomes curious, then later is attracted to this. This term is mere exposure effect phenomenon in which repeated exposure to novel stimuli tends to increase an individual's liking for such stimuli. So proximity. Kapag, laging kang, uh, pag may bago kang nakita, narinig, nakakaiba sa iyo. Okay? Doon, bagong kakatuwaan mo. May tendency tayong matuwa doon or ma-fall. Okay, similarity. Hindi ko nababasahin. From the word itself, similarity. Pagka tayo nakatagpo ng taong, kaparehas natin ang hilig. Di ba? Tayo yung madaling mahulog doon sa taong yun. Kaparehas tayo ng pinaniniwalaan. Madali tayong nahuhulog doon sa taong yun. Na, na, madaling pakisamahan. Lahat ng trip natin, naiintindihan. Madali tayong nahuhulog sa taong yun. Okay? Rep reciprocity, okay? Ayun. Uh, re reciprocity is an idea that a particular person has a perception that an individual is interested with him or her. So, hindi ito kakapalan ng mukha. Talaga meron tayong instinct na yung taong yun ay may gusto sa atin or tuwa sa atin, okay? That's reciprocity, Okay. Hence, this idea is reflected in the principle of reciprocity which states that when a person receives comments or liking or loving of one, tends to also reciprocate in the same manner. Alam nyo ga yung kagagalaw ninyo sa inyong kabarkada, kayo ay uh, yung inyong kabarkada ay nahulog. Okay, that's reciprocity. Sunod, attractiveness. Okay, so pag attractive ka, syempre, uh, yun, uh, ikaw ay uh, natutuwa dun sa taong yun kasi may nakikita ka sa kanyang maganda. Okay, so we have physical attractiveness. Physical beauty plays an important role in drawing people together. Kasi tayo kalimitan, mahilig tayo sa maganda, sa pogi, sa mais ang itsura, sa para sa atin ay kaaya-aya ang itsura. Okay, that's attractiveness. Okay? Love and attachment. According to Crookes, attachment means an intense bond to develop that develops between two individuals, either between infant and that parent or between adults and lovers. Okay, the, the one way... The way one develops attachment is rooted in infancy. Infants are attached to their caregiver and because it is generally their mothers who provide nourishment and care, hence attachment is developed towards them. So according to Freud, infant becomes attached to the one who provides oral satisfaction. And to Erickson, physical comfort and sensitive care are keys to the establishment of trust and mistrust during the first year of developmental. Hence, infant sense of trust serves as a foundation of attachment. So ito yon mga bata. Hindi porket sinabi lagi or narinig nating attachment, yun ay dahil lamang sa boyfriend and girlfriend relationship or husband and wife. Kapag sinabi nating attachment, pwede yun ay attachment ng magnanay, attachment ng magkaibigan, attachment ng maglolo at lola, attachment ng magteacher or ng magbest friend, okay? So, yung mga theorists or psychologists, meron silang mga sinabi, okay? Sabi ni Freud, ang mga baby daw, 
ay attach dun sa taong nagbibigay sa kanila ng oral satisfaction. And when we say oral satisfaction, yung nagbibigay sa kanila ng dede. Okay? Kaya sila'y attach na attach sa kanilang mother. Okay? Si kay Erickson naman, ang kanya, kung sino yung nagbibigay ng physical comfort and sensitive care sa, sa bata. Kung kayo ay may mga pinsan or kapatid, kung mapapansin niyo kung sino ang mga nagbibigay ng kasiyahan sa mga batang yun, sumasalot sa kanila pag sila'y napapagalitan ng mga matatanda, doon sila attach na attach. Okay? Sunod. Last part. Building a healthy relationship. So, paano ka daw makakapag-maintain ng healthy relationship? So, una, you maintain a meaningful emotional connection with what each other. Okay? Lagi niyong tatandaan na kayo ay uh, kailangan may emotional connection. Regardless of what is happening with the two of you, kahit kayo halimbawa ay uh, uh, may problema, halimbawa, huwag niyong kakalimutan na kayo ay maging involved at emotionally connected sa inyong partner. Whether it be your... Uh, a romantic partner or even your siblings or friends or kung sino mang ka-partner, dapat kayo ay palaging connected. Padalawa, you are not afraid of disagreement. Okay? Kung kayo ay nagtataasan ng boses o nagkakagalit, huwag kayong uh, huwag niyong katakutan yung part ng relationship na yun kasi that will make you grow. Okay? Kahit hindi kayo, kapag ka ang inyong relationship ay uh, strong, Okay? Hindi kayo nagkakaroon ng conflict. So, the fact na ikaw ay natatakot na magkaroon kayo ng disagreement or pag-aaway, ibig sabihin, hindi ka pa lagay ang loob sa inyong rela relasyon or relationship. You keep outside relationships and interests alive. Okay? So, kahit kayo ay uh, magkarelasyon na o kaya best friend, wag mong isasara ang uh, iyong uh, direksyon na magkaroon pa rin ng ibang uh, hobbies. For example, o kanyari, sa boyfriend-girlfriend relationship, huwag niyong pipigilan ng inyong boyfriend and girlfriend kung gusto nilang lumabas kasama ang mga kabarkada. Okay? Kasi alam naman natin lahat na hindi naman tayo talaga ang makakapagbigay ng lahat ng pangangailangan. Okay? Don't get me wrong. Pero for example, o halimbawa, yung saya ng kasama ang kabarkada. Diba? Kung mapapansin niyo kung halimbawa, kayo lang lagi ang magkasama ng boyfriend and girlfriend nyo na mag-shopping, Hindi naman sa lahat ng magkakataon nag enjoy sila. So, hayaan pa rin natin sila na magkaroon ng buhay outside our relationship. It doesn't mean na iiwanan kayo, kundi papatuloy lang naman yung buhay niya kasi hindi lang naman sa atin umiikot ang mundo nila. Okay? Meron tayong iba't iba pang sistema. Okay? Meron pa tayong iba't ibang... Um, uh, May iba pang laman ang ecosystem, okay? And then, you communicate openly and honestly. Magpakatotoo tayo, okay? Kung may nagawa tayong pagkakamali, aminin natin. Kung may nagawa tayong uh, hindi maganda, aminin natin. Kasi, kailangan nating uh, maging open at honest. Kung, kung lagi tayong magtatakipan, kung lagi tayong magtataguan, walang mangyayari, okay? So, that ends our discussion. I hope you learned something from uh, this. If you have questions, you can send me a message.